Okay, our next talk is about uh, cent uh, discourse centric collective intelligence for the common good, presented by Anna Delido. Anna, welcome to Belgrade. Thank you very much. Uh, do I have to hold this? So good morning, everyone. Uh, so I am Ana Delido. Uh, I work at the Open University, the Knowledge Media Institute, and today I'm going to talk about uh, discourse-centric collective intelligence for the common good. So that's my team, and the research we do is basically at the intersection of uh, three research fields. The study of human dynamics of engagement. So we are trying to bring together large groups of peoples and try to help them to have better structured online or face-to-face -face dialogue to develop some forms of a collective capacity to solve a complex pro problems. And to do that, we use approaches that are visual-based and argumentation-based. So let me explain how this research on collective intelligence sits in the wider CI research framework. So the mainstream approach to, to CI, they have uh, an aggregation principle. So basically, uh, collective intelligence is uh, generated by the machine aggregation of individual isolated network intelligence. So basically, a wider problem or challenge is split in uh, smaller tasks. These tasks are distributed to a crowd. Then the crowd accomplishes the task, the crowd member, in isolation. And then the system finds uh, structured and a different complex way to aggregate the data in order to solve the more complex problem. And these approaches, they have been very successful in fields such as you know, citizen science, uh, IT, e-commerce, with tools uh, that you may know as crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, prediction markets, and uh, ideation systems. And um, basically, uh, the strengths of these approaches is somehow also a weakness when these approaches want to be uh, applied to different complex decision-making processes. Why? Because a CI aggregation approach, they do not require any group awareness, and they do not require the group to build a common understanding of the problem. And actually, uh, inference, social interaction, and communication in the users is uh, considered to be undermining the CI process, because it can pro provoke different forms of bias, uh, for peer imitations, and so it has to be avoided. So it's quite clear then that these type of approaches, they can't be very fruitful in other contexts, in which uh, you basically want to allow more complex decision-making um, uh, actions that involve different users, and you want this user to share information, to build common knowledge, and uh, possibly move towards shared decision to solve complex societal challenges. So every time there is a very complex system in which the goal requires some forms of reflection, uh, learning, or civic intelligence, this CI aggregation approach may be not the best. And in these cases, we need what we call contested collective intelligence. This is a a dialogue and argumentation-based collective intelligence approach that it's really useful when you are in a context in which there is not one worldview that fits everyone else. You need to have multiple stakeholder view, value embedded into the CI systems. Uh, you have an environment in which the evidence are ambiguous. They have multiple interpretations that are equally legitimate. And therefore, you need to enable different way and to build different interpretative narrative that could be even contradictory, but they are still meaningful. And the grow of the intelligence being in singular or collective have to be built in different, on different forms of dialogue communication between stakeholders. So uh, this is what we define co-creation approach. And they are quite distinctive in two main aspects. First of all, they require awareness. 
So this awareness-unawareness mechanism is quite key to distinguish these two types of approaches. And also, it's, uh, it's, it aims to develop co-creation. So basically, you need to have people that work together in mutual awareness and trying to build common ground and solve collectively and build a collective solution to pressing problems. So dynamics such as reflections, um, ability to improve each other's works throughout the collective intelligence process are quite key dynamics to ensure the effectiveness of CI. So if we imagine collective intelligence as a spectrum that moves from collective insect, uh, sensing to collective actions, we can see there is a lot done in the CI world at the edge of this spectrum, while we are interested to support the central part of it. So we want to support systems, see high systems that support collective sense making, move the group toward the identification and co-creation of solutions that then can move toward collective decision and uh, uh, coordinate action on the ground. So the question is, are the systems that we see nowadays that support online dialogue and communication really good at doing a supporting big central uh, capability of the CI spectrum? Um, well, in theory, you know, like uh, uh, all the uh, diffusion of social media and question answering systems, both in the academic business world, uh, civic society world, it's an exciting opportunity to use dialogue and communication to build collective intelligence. But in reality, the platform that we see to do that, they are not really designed to support unbiased democratics and meaningful co-creation of ideas. And there are some very specific design pitfalls uh, for reason for which this happens. First of all, uh, in common systems, the only common uh, community judgment that are allowed are simple plus one, or in the best cases, minus one. So you have to be aware that the minus one in most social media platform was deleted for a very specific reason, because research indicated that uh, it didn't sell. Basically, people, in order to, uh, to be more inclined to buy, they have to be on a community of similar peers. So the minus one was deleted, so now Facebook doesn't have it, Twitter doesn't have it, Google doesn't have it. Uh, and even the platform that still have it though, they are dividing a dichotomic, you know, the world into two simple meaning of judgment, positive or negative. So they somehow structurally divide society instead of bringing together in conversation. So of course there is no then a clear mechanics to understand where ideas contrast and uh, the reward mechanism just prize and reward popularity and do not help any development of critical thinking. There are also some problems with the way they list the post. So they are just temporarily ordered, so there is no insight of any logical structure of uh, the ideas and arguments and any evidential basis of coherence of this dialogue. And of course, this bring, you know, like a, a big problem on idea assessment and also uh, it's not easy to refine and improve ideas also using other people's comments, so peer evaluation. So even the few systems that have, like Quora for example, that have some dynamics of the user being able to edit their post after the commenting phase, they, they keep no tracks of uh, what was the comment that really made me change my mind and why. So it's really not easy to find out why the community is evolving toward the common understanding of solution of the problem. So all this variety uh, makes uh, a clear argument that uh, the system that we find that support dialogue uh, on the web today have a lot of feedful. They support dialogue that is poor, is difficult to evaluate idea, and one very scary thing, they also promote platform islands and balkanization. So all these online systems are like walled garden. 
so people are just talking between them. So imagine a public deliberation topic in which you need to understand how people interpret in between different communities. So there is no way to bridge this across uh, platforms and communities. So this hampers the quality of the dialogue. It hampers the quality of participation, and also it doesn't allow any assessment of the quality of a debate. So to overcome that, there is a new class of tools um, that have been developed in research and argumentation and computer-supported argument visualization uh, that are trying to provide a more structured uh, dialogue space that builds on the use of a very simple data model, which simplifies the uh, argumentation model, which overlay a little bit of semantic structure to the way you capture and uh, represent the dialogue. And this little, still intuitive structure amplifies the power of analytics and the quality of dialogue interface you can have. And it has been proved to be very useful also by lay people. So in the Catalyst project, uh, a quite big EU project that ran for two years, two million two-year project, we had uh, um, a big consortium working on a wide set of this type of discourse center collective intelligence tools. And we produce a, a, an ecosystem of tools that then we deployed and tested out with different social innovation organizations. We built our uh, tools on a deep analysis of the pain points that we collected with the community around the, 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 the problem with existing systems and social media for the deliberation-based social innovation. So I want to talk about three of these tools that were developed uh, by the Open University, by my group. The first one is LightMap. So LightMap in the CI spectrum sits at the beginning, so bridging collective sensing to collective sense making. So it's a web annotation and knowledge mapping tools that in a different way but similar to Tor is like overlaying a network of meaning and interpretation on top of the web. So basically you have a bookmarklet that allows you to annotate and gather clips of text around the web different communities, different websites, and then you overlay some meaning and interpretation. So basically highlights and start stating, I think this is a question, I think this is an idea. And then together it gives you a 2D canvas in which you can start mapping your interpretation, your web notes, building structure, uh, dialogue and argument maps. So you can see now you can have a dialogue that is evidence-based from your inquiry on the bed. You can is visually share with others your thinking and interpretation and provides a quick, a, an easy way to identify what are the main issues tackled, what are the main solutions, what are the main argument, pro and con of each solution. Can I use this to assess and perhaps next jet shoes, which one is best for my community. So on top of that, we developed the CI dashboard, which is a, a collective intelligence analytics service that could be used also by other online uh, debate technologies that want to use this uh, simplified IBIS models. So other people can use our advanced analytics visualization alerts and then create their own dashboards and uh, of course, without sharing data with us, they have a visualization service that help to make sense of the online dialogue and conversation. So LightMap, since his first launch three years ago, has been steadily growing his community, even slowly, and is used in 10 different countries by over 100 community, which is quite good for uh, a European project where we are that is almost living by itself now. So I am actually quite proud of this. The tool is uh, keep um, growing. And this is showing an emerging public and in, in education impact. So it has been used by different local area communication for mapping uh, different live meetings and debates. And this provides you know, evidence that improves self-agency and uh, uh, digital skills in the local communities and also negotiation in complex uh, situation 
because people are focusing on the map while they talk about, but there is another conversation. Anyway, and then there is a wide Brazilian community of teachers that use it for uh, inquiry-based learning. So um, the second tool is Debate Hub. Debate Hub sits on the right of the spectrum, so it tries to bridge the moving from collective uh, debates and ideation to collective decision making. How does it do that? So it's basically a normal online discussion tool. If you look about, uh, at it, it could look apparently like a normal web forum. So people just uh, uh, write uh, in the blank space, but actually for how the interface is designed, while they are writing for how the interface is placed in the information, they are actually building semantic annotation and argument map behind the scene on which we are able to develop advanced analytics and visualization to support them uh, in uh, the sense making of the debate. Uh, this tool is, it provides uh, very good facilitations features so to respond to some of the pitfalls of online debate platforms. For example, idea duplication, redundancy, so you can use peers can actually split ideas, merge ideas, move ideas, and improve on the collective structure of the debate. Uh, there is also a set of analytics and, in the, and visualization that help to understand the state and progress of the debate that could be particularly useful for newcomers or community manager that need to communicate and advocate the results of a community work, for example. And uh, third, it allows a sort of challenge-based phase decision-making process. So community can launch, for example, a decision-making process, stage it by time, and uh, decide different phase. One, for example, in which they ideate, then they start debate, assessing the argument, and then after that, you basically have uh, two different phase of ideas reduction and the de de decision-making. So, what do we do in these phases? So the, the intermediate phase, we call it reduce. And um, basically, it comes from research uh, from other collective intelligence scholars, a research I really enjoyed. Uh, basically, they found out that, especially in large-scale collective intelligence uh, processes, uh, crowds tend to reach a faster agreement when you ask them, instead of asking them what they like, you ask them, what they absolutely can't live with. So if you ask them, you know, what is really violating your inner deep value that you really are not able to negotiate with? And you filter this out, so when in the next phase you do like majority voting on the positive preferences, the highly contextual options that could violate a moronity but silly valuable uh, process are set apart. So um, consensus is reached in a faster way. So um, Debate Hub uh, has been seen in the last three years used by different social innovation community to uh, urban community network, some uh, cooperative, so basically a lot of organizational um, organization that have very horizontal and they have the need to involve distributed stakeholders in collective decision-making processes, which is becoming much more uh, a, a really important uh, uh, need uh, as the democratization of organization is increasing. Uh, so what did we need from the real-world deployment? So we need some technical lesson learned. So we need about, we learned about the value of this simple semantic data modeling. So it worked, it allowed successful sharing of uh, data uh, between different platforms, and it allowed, you know, like advanced analytics and visualization to work across platforms. What was really hard to get was a large scale adoption. And the main problem with that, it was the integration with uh, big, uh, um, community social media that uh, people already use. Basically, people don't want to change the tool they use, so the need of uh, bridging with existing social media is very big. But still there is a tension, because these social media, they are not really up to create 
um, information. So this is an open challenge. And then we learned about the paramount importance of user interface work. So we learned that CI needs good interfaces that needs to be transparent. So users want to know how and what data is captured and what analytical power, how we are processing their data and to which purpose. So we are going to get back to that later on. Uh, and we methodologically learned that co-creation approach are somehow more different, difficult than uh, aggregation approach for one main reason. They need a pre-existing community. So people may well be different, have different opinion, um, completely different values, but in order to really engage in uh, co-creation and meaningful deliberation process, they need to share something. They need to share a common problem. They may just need to share local spaces, being part of the same geographical community. They need to share a common ideal or goal because it's on this even tiny commonality that then they bring the motivation to be more understanding, to listen to others, and to be able to co-create. So this is a, a big uh, uh, requirement, let's say, for this type of uh, collective intelligence approach that we learned about. Um, uh, now, uh, so one, and one big issue was also participation. So we understood that, you know, like all the online media, participation is hard, it follows a power law, so interface design becomes really crucial. So we embarked in a more recent project called the Election Devalvalization Project, another big project still going on, funded by EPSRC uh, in the UK. And this project basically uh, wanted to provide new mode of engagement for people with televised election debates, uh, providing mainly two things, two companion up, one for engagement, the other one for sense making. So our goal was basically moving from a past of a very passing experience of watching television and over, go, over the present, in which social media is just overlay, um, let's say, a way to talk and shout at each other, and perhaps a future or maybe a present after a picture that is already there, in which uh, basically uh, second screen interaction is only allowing uh, uh, disattachment and divide and lack of real communication. So. We had two main questions. First of all, we wanted to understand, again, if uh, uh, social media nowadays really provide uh, um, informative mean of engaging with this, uh, if they really capture the variety of interaction or, and you know, feedback. That, and also, we wanted to understand how to improve this with appropriate analytical uh, infrastructure. So we designed a real real-time audience feedback methods and app, which has this main goal, provide active engagement, better understanding the audience, um, and then, most importantly, enabling reflection and sense-making on uh, the debate process. And of course, provide access, assess, way to assess the media event. So how does it work? So the real-time feedback app is a very, use a very um, intuitive metaphor. So use reflective t triggers that are very easy statements, that are statements of things that you may want to say to the politician while they are talking. These statements are very light, very simple language is used, and, but they capture very nuanced meaning. And, um, and this, and they are preset following specific theories. And uh, this basically allow in that quality analytics that could be built from this uh, crowdsourcing audience feedback reaction. So basically, we had a prototype in which we tested with uh, different theories and different set of cards, we call them cards, these reflective statements, and then we had a prototype version, and then eventually was so successful that we went to develop uh, a mobile, uh, actually a desktop version, 
which was mainly targeted to three audiences, the citizens at large, to provide new way for uh, real-time interaction, for analysts, like uh, political analysts or digital journalists, to actually have some insights, real insights, on the audience reaction, and for the main expert to assess their performance. So we developed a 5x4, 20 car, so we push it really forward into <laughs> from the cognitive overload side, uh, because we wanted to break it. We wanted to understand how many cards, how many reflecting statements people can comprehensively deal with while they are at the same time watching television. And surprisingly, people were, had no problem whatsoever. They use all the cards all the time. Participation never decreased. We tested this in the UK general election in 2015 with a 400 people panel and then uh, um, 2,000 people in the wild. And uh, the answer of the interaction were, you know, experience were really positive. People had no usability issue. They were really engaged with it. We have focus grouped after some of the panels in which we, they basically were so happy to use it that they were using the cards even to react to the focus group debate. <laughs> so people really enjoyed it from an interaction perspective. And um, we have then improved the interface in the 2017 elections. We have provided a mobile app, the first analytics interface, and uh, tested again. And, um, added uh, another intensity features that allows basically people to press strongly when they really feel strongly about something. And this is also was very well perceived. And, um, and finally, we provide, uh, we started developing an initial reflective analytics reports that people get at the end of their experience. And we tested the feedback around that. So what we learned is that this method is quite powerful in the sense that it allows a really introspective uh, view on the on the on the lay, on uh, on people reaction and provide insights that are much more accountable than the one you can find in social media because are much more nuanced. They are not just a positive negative. You can understand very complex things in the way you craft the card. You could ask people, oh, I want to know about trust. So you could have a trust card that says, I really don't trust in him, or I don't trust what he's saying, uh, or I don't trust this debate. As you can see, even within the trust dimension, there is a very semantic, big semantic difference if the trust, the lack of trust comes from skepticism toward the speaker or lack of quality of the debate or needs of evidence. So you can understand the design of the cards really can impact the power of the analytics. And the annotation of the data is coming with no middle interpretation. So there is not an expert layering this. It's the user reacting real time while they are watching. So going also beyond some of clear uh, recognizing the literature issues of memory gaps. So basically, there is another issue with common polling uh, systems. You know, people, when they are asked at the end of a two hours debate what they think about something, they're going to react on the basis of what they remember. And what they remember can be affect too much about their capability of memorize, their beliefs, and it's not really capturing the immediate more emotional reaction that can be captured actually captured by this method, which is what it makes it extremely powerful but also extremely dangerous. Because you can imagine that the type of analytics um, and slicing of uh, user reaction that you can have and the usability of the interface uh, make it quite easy for people to start profiling, to start, uh, you know, like trying to use it for harmful purposes. As we have seen, it's already happened by big corporations. So the issue, though, is not trying to understand how do we design for technologies that take the best out of this crowdsourcing 
and analytical powers, but at the same time are used for the good. So the same tools that we criticize could be actually uh, used to improve uh, positive things like, such as critical thinking, civic learning and so on. But this is a big open design question. And then uh, we develop a companion app called Democratic Replay in which we wanted to not support only engagement but also sense making on the process of the debate. So we took the analytics and we take it to another level. So we basically try to understand, okay, what type of analytics, automatic human expert analysis could be done on, on, on a political debate and how can they be served real time as an instrument for people to make timely sense of the experience that they are having. So uh, basically we developed a different interface uh, it's a, um, I would say, uh, a quite cutting edge hyper video uh, interface um, that provides um, visual analytics and interactive visualis dynamic visualization combined with hyper video replays to provide an experience in which users can actually receive analytic feedback while they are watching the video and make sense of it live. So we had different analytics, for example, assessing the politician and their performance. So you would see cards popping when, while he is talking. They show things like, oh, he is trying to undermine other people's records, or he is not providing factual evidence, or things like that. And of course, you can slice the analysis to different aspects of the political quality and performance uh, of the debate. Um, of course, <laughs> we do also argument, uh, visualization and analysis. Um, and that's quite powerful because it allows, while you are watching the debate, to see what are the uh, hidden discourse dynamic behind it. For example, in here, you can see that Ed Miliband is uh, rising the big uh, red link uh, an argument you know, against the privatization of the NHS. Uh, but while watching this and looking at that, you can see also who, what are the people that think like him and the people that actually disagree with him. And you can spot incongruency. For example, you would notice that he contradicted himself later on in the debate. Uh, <laughs> so you may be surprised about that and then go and watch what it says and you would realize that actually he's not against privatization but he wants to cap privatization so you see how all this analytics serve to the users really transforms and converts into insightful sense making uh, hypermedia interfaces and the same different analytics could be done using different visualization giving way of interactive, uh, you know, the timeline, uh, this, the, showing the heartbeat. Well, if you are interested, there are over 20 visualizations that users can use for different analytics, so I can show it later. So what did we learn? Well, uh, we, we learned that really people can think critically, which was amazing, because especially uh, if we look at the skepticism that there is now about the possibility of, you know, social media and hypermedia to really help people to think critically, um, develop a political opinion in a critical, open way, shift their opinion, well, we can do that. It's just that the social media tool that we use to do that now, they are not designed for that. But if we do design for things such as collective sense making, critical thinking, then the results are very positive. We compare democratic replay with the main BBC, um, normal replay interactions, and we found out that there was a systematic improvement of uh, basically a lot of sense making capabilities, such as um, the way of identifying unexpected results, the way to de reflect deeper on the debate, focus your attention, being able to identify the difference between facts, manipulation, and uh, most importantly, 
most users systematically said it improved the way of assessing their personal assumption, which is great, I think, because it, it shows that people can change their mind if they really can make sense of good reason and good evidence for doing that. And also, many of them changed some initial assumptions they had before the debate, which was quite impressive. A lot of people said, oh, I joined this experience thinking that I am a conservative now. I don't know who I am anymore, which I was very happy about. And then uh, uh, lots of people um, seem to be uh, really uh, surprised by their own reaction, use it to, to detect uh, new things they wanted to learn. So there were a lots of positive, yeah. let's say, longitudinal study. I mean, we had an A-B testing here with different groups. Yeah, we yeah, have, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Comparing this with uh, um, an, uh, the main BBC replay interface, so it was different. So we wanted to know how this performed better than other interfaces. But we haven't done any longitudinal study yet, the one in which we take the same group of people and then uh, we show them, for example, if there are any learning uh, going on uh, while they are using it, maybe multiple times. Uh, no, there are a lot of other, you know, like uh, scientific evidence that can be collected about the effectiveness or not of, uh, of this technology. So, uh, some of the things, as I said, that we learn is that people can learn to think critically and make sense of political manipulation, chef facts versus speculation, gain new insight, and this can help them to confidently, in an informed way, shape their political choices, which is very much needed in our society nowadays. So we also learned, though, that individual sense-making process need machine help. So, <laughs> Uh, in democratic replay, a lot of the analytics were served, were, were done by manual annotation of expert. But there are some promising fields, such as, for example, argument mining or automatic fact-checking detection, that could help with this. So if you combine these approaches that promotes machine intelligence with usable, intuitive uh, user interfaces that can bring back the power of the analytics to the user in a way they can easily make sense of it, understand it, then the magic can happen somehow. So, um, but we need also, uh, if, if this should be ready, real, impactful, and live, we need um, to work with machine intelligence too. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's it. I think that uh, I want to conclude with the future challenge. So there is uh, uh, some, one of the big challenge is how we really move to large scale public deliberation. So reflecting on Catholic's lesson learned, one of the big programs was that. And um, so how we can bridge uh, and go beyond the uh, gated wall, and how we can, you know, communicate across um, different community, and also how the, we define the architecture of participation. So, uh, different community needs different things at different times. So, one big question is, um, you know, how we bring them to work together, and then a key question is how we start more to bridge the last phase of decision making, which was the less explored. So we need to work with, uh, um, you know, like, um, that's why I'm looking forward for the next two talk, <laughs> in collaboration with the uh, uh, decision making expert, we need to try to find ways in which this uh, hypermedia interface can be bridged by different voting systems, priority systems, uh, to provide effective decision-making platform. 
Um, and then there is a struggling, uh, um, let's say, challenge, which is uh, for every CI platform. So the balancing between this critical sh tension between the need of structure, the contribution of many people, but also permitting this interaction to be very light, because otherwise it doesn't scale up. And that's why it's so important to focus on new, innovative, participatory interaction, multimedia interfaces, and methodology, like the one in uh, the audience real-time feedback, trying to balance between, you know, enlarging, you know, like enlarging participation, but keeping the analytical power, basically. Um, and finally, uh, we are interested in designing new, play, new interfaces for explicability. Uh, why? Because as I said, we learned that CI works best when it's transparent. So people want to know how their analytics are used. They want to control it, they want to manage it. So, um, so we need to understand more how even when the uh, analytics uh, are complex, and uh, the algorithm views are complex, we find easy way to explain them to user because only if we explain them, they be, will be really affecting the way they interact in the world, talk, discuss, make decision, and co-create. So thank you very much. Uh, all the, well, just a little thing. So if you care for this, care about awareness, transparency, explicability, Think about the users, the way you can engage them, put them at the center of your design, and try to reach empowerment of technology. Uh, and of course, my cut on this is trying to redesign the way we talk, and so find new dialogue spaces, not only for dialogue between people, institution, but also with machine that will become more and more important, and also object-oriented dialogue, or local dialogue, geo-deliberation, and a lot of interesting uh, research aspects. So if you're interested, join the community. So we are a community of over 100. Uh, at the moment, uh, in the last three years, it was funded in 2000, no, four years. In 2014, we had, uh, uh, I think, three workshop uh, at CHI and Community and Technologies, uh, and uh, two special issues came out on collective intelligence, this course by ACI on the AI and Society um, uh, Springer Journal and the Group Decision and Negotiation Journal. So we are an active community, and if you're interested, just email me, and thanks for listening. I haven't read the question. <laughs> something so we we are somehow imposing a level of uh, of uh, you know a, a, a source of language in the way they express their thoughts that it aims to reconstruct uh, quality debate there are not rules uh, apart this and then there are no limits of words so you can use uh, many word images it's very multimedia I haven't said that but all the approach I work with are very multimedia, so we attach everything, picture, video, different type of evidence to your claims. Um, do you have a formal system of voting? 
or reaching a conception of multiplanetary included in your platform. Not formal way of reaching a consensus. We have two different types of voting, as I said, reduction voting and uh, positive voting in debate hub, um, but not in, uh, in the other platform I showed, so uh, democratic reflay and refraction. And that is actually because in that other platform, our goal is, was not, is go, it was going beyond the normal theoretical approach to political debate as a winner or loser game. We did not want to attract people's attention on voting plus or mining, you know, in favor of a politician or what he was said, saying. We wanted them to really think about the debate and its dynamic in a different, deeper way. So no, there is no voting, but there is uh, some mechanism in the other platform. How do you come to the content of the card? That's a great question. So we have uh, uh, methodologies that, uh, that goes with the use of these technologies. So basically, uh, as you will have probably understood, we have uh, we believe in value-driven design. So the first things we do is trying to understand uh, what are the goals and value of our community. So we start with a set of focus group in which we understand what does the community wants to reflect on and how do they want to assess or evaluate the debate. So through we, we usually do a series of four or five photo groups and then we analyze those and uh, with the political communication groups in this case, um, we basically came across the handcrafting of these sentences, which was very tedious. You don't know. I think the longest times of the development was to agree in the group what the sentence should be. You know, it was like very long, difficult process because, of course, everything is bounded to what you capture. And all the meaning of the visualization and analytics are on the quality of the statement. So it's, uh, it has been done in a collaborative way and uh, with the community. And there is not an absolute set of cards. So you can, your community may want to analyze the debate in terms of gender equality. Or in, and we actually had requests for that. So we have now working with a group that want to use this method to assess the quality of gender equality discourse in political debate. So we are now designing cards only to assess gender equality. Now, you may have different psychological dynamics you want to observe. So the power of the tool is on the fact that it comes with a method that is com it, 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 and it provides a very intuitive way to capture real time fine-grained, meaningful, semantically really charged interaction at scale and in an easy way, but it's open from the point of view of the theory and the data models that you want to observe or is agnostic on the things that you want to people to reflect on. So, yeah, I don't know if this replied to your question, but it's a good question. That's one of the hardest things. And of course, Choosing the cards means also choosing the community you work with. So we have been working with psychologists in some application, with political communication scientists. And if this was to be applied, as we had some requests, to different type of life events, some are more interesting for me than others. Some people want to apply it for sports events. I'm not less interested in that, but you know. Uh, but some other things are really interesting, like for example, a company contacted us and wants to apply it to the assessment of juries um, in, uh, in, uh, uh, in the US because uh, lawyers need to have insights, for example, on how uh, the jury member thinks when they select them. Uh, and of course, this moment-to-moment -moment life interaction provides very insightful uh, psychological uh, insights on uh, the way they react to things. So, um, yeah, that's all from me, I think. Thank you. Thank you.